This is a Veterans History Project. This Sunday, April 22nd, 2007. Mr. Walsh, will you please state your name, date of birth, and place of birth for us? Uh, my name is William Walsh, and I was born February 22nd, 1921. And uh, I, in my early youth, I remember mostly everything that was related to patriotism. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, I remember going out to Forbes Field. My aunt, my grandmother took me out there to see Colonel Lindbergh come in, and he was at Forbes Field. And as I re recall, he was drove through the field, around the field, and he let go a thousand pigeons in the, in the sky. And I was so impressed because he was an American hero, and uh, I I thought. That was so great, and then uh, being being a born on Washington's birthday made a, a big imprint on me because uh, my grandmother she would uh, always have a cherry pie on my birthday, and always related to George Washington. And at one time, uh, my aunt from Johnstown she she came down to our home in Pittsburgh. And she brought a picture of George Washington working in the um, in the shed, hammering out some steel, and he'd stand there with his uh, sleeves rolled up. And I was so impressed because he was the father of our country. And uh, then it continued on. I would uh, always our Mister Stay. Always have, they'd always have a parade. I'd always go to that parade and uh, watch those soldiers watching down the march on the road. It's made a big imprint on me. I was, I was oriented. Patriotism was strong in my mind. And then, uh, of course, I graduated from Allegheny High School, and uh, I was planning on taking up art, but I got wrapped up in. Uh, it was a dep just uh, getting over depression days. It, it was uh, things uh, wasn't so much education as it was getting a job, getting work, and help with the family. So I know many, many went to, went to school, but many, many didn't go. And it, it comes. It's another story because when World War World War Two came along and the men were discharged from the service, that Roosevelt had the, the GI Bill for this, for people to go to school. But uh, that is in the future. Mm -hmm. um, uh, of course, uh, as I was growing up in the high school, the war was all around everybody. everybody we were not in the war. But we were supplying materials and so forth. But we weren't in combat. We weren't uh, hadn't declared war. So uh, everybody was. Uh, a lot of people were just pitching in uh, with their labor to make the thing go. We had many many programs like the NRA and uh, and uh, everything trying to get the country back on the on this uh, even keel. So uh, and then they had the draft. Yeah, those, but uh, everybody knew that they'd eventually go into the service. Uh, but uh, many, many uh, joined up the service, and uh, there was really no, no uh, absolute fact that there was going to be a war with us being, uh, being isolated like we were. There was no uh, real feeling that their war would uh, reach us. So uh, in uh, 1942, I, I received my notice for, uh, to join the Army. And I went down to the post office and uh, uh, took, through, took the physical and 
then uh, there was a there was a one officer said uh, office door said Air Force, and I thought well I'll, I'll, I better go in that in that Air Force, and then I thought well uh, I don't I don't think I'll, I think I'll just wait until they pull me in there, and. Uh, which they did. It didn't take too long, and uh, we all, all the families, came down to the railroad station and saw us off, and uh, we were all gung ho for it. We were in there, and we knew we was, and the war was, uh, was in full blast now. So uh, they they got aboard the train and the Penn Station. And uh, oh, there was a, a many, many men uh, going on that train. They took us down to Tennessee, and it, and they, it was in the uh, all the seats that were filled. Everybody was uh, having a party, uh, mostly talking. Some were playing cards, and it was at nighttime. And I woke up in the morning. Everybody was sleeping on their chairs, uh, and the next morning, why we were in uh, Tallahassee, Tennessee, that would be Camp Forest, Tennessee, and uh, uh, no, I'm I'm wrong. I'm, I'm, uh, that trip was trip was to uh, to um, Fort Meade, Maryland. Okay. And uh, they they put us in barracks there. Okay, and it was uh, a fence. The fence was close t to the uh, to separate us from the uh, civilians, mm -hmm. and it was called Boomtown. Of course, we never uh, was there long enough to find out what, what boom means. And uh, the only thing we were taught was how to make a bed. And uh, when I mean make a bed, it means you throw a coin on it. It's supposed to bounce. And uh, next thing I knew, I was on another train going to Camp Forest, Tennessee. Were you told you were going to be going, or did they just assign you to go to Camp Forest? Uh, did you no, know? There was nothing new. Uh, we were just uh, herded, more mm -hmm. or less. And uh, uh, they point mm -hmm. point to where you're going. They point to where you're going. <laughs> and, Tell us uh, about that. What happened next? They, they put me in the ordnance department, ordnance, uh, and I was uh, making maps for the, the uh, officers had uh, critiques and they'd uh, need these maps, so I was ma making maps, and then uh, uh, all of a sudden, uh, Everybody was uh, ordered to go to uh, form up and go down to this uh, main barracks. They were having interviews, and I, I didn't quite understand why it was, which I later found out what the reason was. But at the time, uh, it was a surprise to me. So uh, uh, we went through our interviews. It was a, it was a, more or less a sham interview. Because it was, they had made their mind up what they needed, they needed infantry, and uh, which I later learned was the African campaign was a disaster, and they needed men in a hurry. So they were from all the camps. They were pulling all the infantry, all the different uh, services to go in infantry. So. Um, I never made any formed any opinions or anything. I just I was in the army. I figured that you do just what they tell you to do. So that's what we did. And it came. It became. Uh, by the way, I was put in the in, uh, called the 80th Division at Camp Forest, mm -hmm. and I was in K Company, 319th Infantry uh, but, uh, Regiment, and uh, it was just one series of uh, road marches, and 
getting familiar with the uh, weapons, I was able to, uh, to uh, re uh, uh, I'm trying to think the word. Uh, you, you take you take all these different, like the machine gun, the mortar, and the rifle, and the uh, uh, automatic weapons, and the, uh, uh, when you, when you uh, pass that test, they, they mark that down that you uh, uh, completed that. You know. So uh, I got a taste of all the weapons, which was very good, because I, I, I could use that later on. And uh, the one thing that stood out that was a disappointment was the, uh, the hikes. Uh, one time they, we fell out at around 5 o'clock in the morning. By the way, when you're in the infantry, the company's got 200 men in it. It's, uh, it's, it's remarkable how they can get all 200 men all doing the one, same thing at the same time. But uh, when you're on a hike, it doesn't require much, just endurance and uh, putting yourself in a in a blind spot. You don't know what's going on, you just keep walking. Mile after mile you walk and then fall out for 10 minutes and you go back in and march for another hour or so. And this particular march, we was, we, of course we fell out at five, but of course we didn't leave at five. That's the hurry up and wait thing. You go out and hurry up, get in line, and then you wait about an hour or more before everybody moves out. So we moved out, well, I'll say we moved out maybe at the earliest, five, uh, six o'clock, maybe 6.30, and we kept marching. And we marched till dark. And I, I'm guessing 30 miles, I think. Mm -hmm. And it turned out it was a mistake. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, but I say it must have been the leader's fault. He, he got us lost. And we, when we got back to the camp, it must be 11 o'clock at night. And uh, that sort of made me leery about infantry. Uh, that, that seemed like a bad mistake, having that many men. There's 15,000 men in a division. I'm not sure they were all those guys marching, but there was a lot of people marching. And uh, I, that stands out in my mind. I still remember that. And there was, of course, a lot of people fell out. The ambulance was falling every every company or so. And I made the march. And then uh, that was a disappointment, but I, I was proud of, of being able to uh, qualify for all those weapons. So, um, let's see what uh, happened. Uh, I was in the division about a year. This would have been the 80th division? In the 80th division. Mm -hmm. I was in about a year. Now, was that all at Camp Forest, sir? All at Camp Forest. All at Camp Forest, and that's in Tennessee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's between... Nashville and Chattanooga. Chattanooga. It's, it's a Tallahassee, not Tallahassee, Tallahoma is the town. Tallahoma. Mm -hmm. So uh, they were uh, in the barracks. They brought in some new men to my K company. So they moved my bed from the center of the first floor to the door. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was in the draft, and so I, next uh, next day I complained of chest uh, congestion, you know. So I went uh, to, to uh, what they call uh, roll call, not roll call. What do they call it? Uh, you go to, to report your sick, not feeling well. Mm -hmm. So it, it so happened I had a fever, 
So that's that's the one. If you have a fever, they take you to the hospital. And I was in the hospital for a couple of weeks. And uh, when I got out, my my company was in on on uh, Tennessee maneuvers up in uh, up near Chattanooga. Mm -hmm. So I went up to my outfit. And uh, I was only there maybe a few days, and uh, the call came out. We need rangers. Anybody who wants to be a ranger, come down to the down this big field and sign in that you want to join. So there's eight of us went down to this field, stripped down, and walked through this this area and uh, take a physical examination. Then they had about a, a row of eight discs, and all the rangers from uh, Africa, they, they brought a few back from Africa to interview us. So uh, we went through all that. I went back to the, my company, and uh, the next day, uh, the uh, first sergeant came down and said, you're in the rangers. The other seven didn't make it, the other seven. I thought pretty good about that. And they didn't feel too good. <laughs> they, they took it hard, and I could see why, you know. And uh, they got in a the truck, they took me back to Camp Forest, and I went in the same barracks, I left. The rangers were in the field, and they changed them, they put them all in the barracks. The, the original rangers, they were, they were in the, they were, when, they, when you joined the rangers back then, they all went to Tent City. But when we left the maneuvers, they moved into the barracks. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so when I get left the, uh, the uh, maneuvers, and I go back, I'm in the same barracks that I left. <laughs> it seems strange, doesn't it? So uh, we were, I, I was in the Rangers here and uh, I was really, really proud of that. And uh, just incidentally, as a side remark, um, the first time they called for Rangers, not, not when I went in, but before I went in, uh, they uh, sent a word out for Rangers and a man from my barracks uh, he went to the Rangers, and he'd come up to the up to the barracks where we were in. I was in the 80s. He'd come up to the barracks where he was used to be. He'd cut hair at night. You know, the guys need a haircut. Mm -hmm. He'd cut their hair for two bits, and uh, we was always glad to see him. You know, he was a nice fellow. And uh, so here I was. He was in E Company, and, and I was in F Company. So I got to see a lot of him again, you know. And that was one of the reasons I wanted to get into Rangers when I was in the 80s. Well, he was in the same barracks with me, and when he when he was accepted from Rangers, he'd come up and talk to us, you know. He said, "Boy, you are, you guys ought to get into Rangers. Everybody gets new uniforms, and everybody gets a watch." And uh, <laughs> that seemed like the attractive thing. For, you'd have to live in that, that age, that day and age. I watched me a lot. There's thousands of watches now, you know. <laughs> it's pretty important. And uh, so uh, that was uh, just an added thing I wanted to say about the watches. And, uh, and something else about the watches. Once we were, uh, one thing about the Rangers, when we uh, would go out on a problem or something, or a, a weapons test or something, mm -hmm. uh, Colonel Rudder was in the leader of our battalion. Mm -hmm. And he'd have a, he'd be a speaker at the, everyone, we'd have a gather around, fellas, you know, we'd all gather around and talk man to man. 
And uh, one day he said, what's your problem? Oh, the food's terrible. He says, we found out later, he said, everybody, everybody in the, in the kitchen, to the cook school, that right after that, send them, send them to fix the, get the food better. And then one time, a guy said, I never got a watch. He said, yeah, here's mine. And he threw his watch to him. I thought that was a, amazing for a colonel to do that, you know? And, uh, but that's kind of, that's kind of leadership you had. You didn't have any mistakes. That, that guy was on the ball. And, uh, you know, when you have a, a group of men get together and talk man to man, that makes it really molds you, you know. So, uh, we were there for a while. And then we all boarded trains, mm -hmm. a train, and by the way, it was a Pullman train. Everybody had a sleeper on that. Took us to Florida, Fort Pierce, Florida. It was a, uh, it was like a naval base down there. And they had all these rubber boats. They wanted to teach us how to assault the shore, you know. Everybody had got in the rubber boats and flew around there. And the, uh, they had these, uh, what do they call these, these uh, breakwaters that go way out in the water? Uh, they, they're rocks, big rocks that break the waves, you know. Like, mm -hmm. And there's a channel there, and the tide would come in and go out. And we had to assault that, that uh, formation. And then we had a, one time we had to roll, the, uh, roll our, about six men in them. Rubber moat. You had to row up inside that tide. You'd be paddling, and you looked at the marker, and paddle some more, the same marker there. <laughs> it didn't move. <laughs> That's how strong that tide was. And uh, When you were at Fort Pierce, this is Fort Pierce, Florida? Fort Pierce, Florida, yeah. Where did you guys stay? What were you staying in? We stayed uh, in tents. Okay. And uh, right near the water, mm -hmm. right at the beach. Each mm -hmm. morning you had to go out and do exercise, lift the uh, trunks of trees, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were a lot of, at mealtime, we had this, kitchen was right outside, had those little nets. Mm -hmm. They'd be in your food, all over you, you know. It was rough going. Uh, is, um, oh yeah, the next uh, problem on Fort Pierce, we were to go down and capture the town. Mm -hmm. So we all went down in formation, and in, in different uh, formations. And uh, some of the men captured the, uh, the radio station, the police, police uh, office, and uh, they really did a nice job down there. And, uh, and uh, let's see. And they, uh, then our, uh, they had, uh, by when we came down to that town, they had a band playing, a martial band, and everybody was cheering for us, you know. And when we left, there was no band and nobody cheering. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess they didn't like their town getting taken. Then we come back on uh, in the Fort Dix, New Jersey. Okay. We were in Tent City there. Okay. Did you guys all travel as one one unit, the Second Battalion, yeah. all the way back up? Uh -huh. How'd you get there, back to Fort Dix? Well, on train. By train. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. No Pullman this time. Mm-hmm. We were. We get a second look, I guess. I don't know. So when you joined the the Rangers at Camp Forest, they were already at Camp Forest, right? They were there. Yeah. They were there, and they had already begun their training, or were they just starting their training when you? They were just starting. So you were actually there from the start up with the second. I, second I would Rangers. say they started maybe uh, four months, four or five months before mm -hmm. before I got in. So uh, you just sort of went right in and continued on doing your training with them. Yeah. Yes, sir.
But I had the advantage of the 80s training. Yeah, you had that whole year already yeah, under your belt. I didn't win it like a draft at the end of the Rangers. Mm -hmm. So it was a, an advantage there. Yes, sir. Now, Fort Dix, you went up there by train, all the Rangers together. Yeah. What happened next? They were in Trent, they were in Tent City there. And uh, we had uh, uh, the regular training, you know, uh, field training. But uh, some of the outstanding ones was that we had a night problem. Uh, had to do a, a night problem. But, uh, another time we, uh, we were out for a couple of days to live off the land. They didn't give you any food or anything. All you had was your equipment. If you wanted to eat, you eat from the farmer's food you know, in his gardens and all that sort of thing. I guess they reimbursed anybody to claim damages or anything. But uh, they wanted us to eat off the land. So uh, one one fellow, he was pretty good. He, he could uh, uh, rip a chicken head off with his hands. He twist that neck and pull it off. I, I, I sort of thought that was pretty neat the way he did that. But I guess the, uh, he was only out there a couple of days. And uh, I remember one day, one night we slept in a church, a little old church. And, uh, one morning there was a, uh, uh, there, there was one, uh, oh, I guess I, it was kind of comical. Uh, we were in this, it was an all wooded area there. And down this road come a, a uh, formation of wax. I don't know where they come from. They were on a field march of some kind. And a couple of guys try to capture them. <laughs> you know how guys are there. It was a big joke, you know. And uh, of course, that, uh, like I say, the training is important, you know. Mm -hmm. What happened next? Uh, the next time we went, uh, they, they took us from. Fort Dix over to, um, there's a camp across the street, uh, across the, the uh, I guess it's uh, New York's off across the, is that the Hudson over there? Mm -hmm. Across the Hudson from the New York City uh, was this camp. Mm -hmm. I don't recall what the name of it was. But we were just in there to change, get our clothing. Mm -hmm. We were going overseas. Could it have been Camp Kilmer? Yeah, that's it. Camp Kilmer. Mm -hmm. That was then the, the uh, purpose of that camp is to uh, get you all new equipment and uh, secrecy begins. Mm -hmm. What time of year was this, Mr. Walsh? Do you remember when you were at Camp would, Kilmer? I'd say it would be November. Forty-three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they gave us a chance to, they gave us a lead. We went, I went over to New York City on a, on a ferry boat for a night. A few hours, I guess it wouldn't be. And uh, I went with a friend of mine. His name was Stanette. And he, his father was a, 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 a captain on a, on a, um, what he could a, a big, big ship, cargo ship. He was in the uh, what would they call us? We they were in the uh, the merchant marine. Merchant marine, yeah. yes, sir. He was a merchant marine captain, and Stanet, he was a uh, in the in the merchant marine for a while. And I don't know his history how he got back into the Rangers, but. Uh, he was a real tough guy. And he he wanted to show me the Bowery. Because he, he must have spent a lot of time there. And uh, that's how we went that's how we went to New York. We didn't go to any 
anything uh, splendid or anything. This is the Bowery is the Bowery, you know. So uh, we come back to, back to uh, Kimber. Next thing we knew, we was uh, going over and getting in a, uh, in a like a warehouse over there where they uh, got on the ship, you know, Queen Elizabeth. That think that boat holds uh, fifteen thousand, I think. Mm -hmm. We we were assigned MPs on that boat. I had the uh, the rear end of the boat when my when I was on duty. Sit and stand out there on the, the, uh, the tail end of the boat, and uh, they had a cannon in there on the, on the deck there. And I enjoyed being out there because the water, I, I never knew this, but the water is, it's like diamond shining in the water. You know, the, the boat would make the, I could see the boat, you make it, that's the way it traveled. Like a uh, like a snake, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the water would be uh, really moving, you know, rolling. And at night, it was like like I say, like diamonds out there. Did you know that? I, I, it's I, a chemical I, in the water. It does that. It makes it sparkle, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I would not have known that. It's amazing that. And I really enjoyed that, uh, and of course. Once I uh, tried to tr uh, walk around the boat, but that was impossible. That's too much walking. That's a really a walk. But I walked a good bit down the deck. And uh, a lot of the boys would, uh, a, lot of, a lot of them would sleep and some would uh, gamble. And uh, they were, uh, they had bunks in there, you know. Okay. Down in the hold of the ship? Yeah. And bunks in the, yeah. And, uh, it was, uh, it was a good trip. I mean, there was, uh, I didn't hear any alarms or anything like that. Just a regular trip over. And that's where we docked in uh, Greenwich, Scotland. Can you spell that? Grinnick. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Grinock. It's G R E N O C K or something okay. like that. Okay. Grinock, Scotland. And uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Is this, uh, this keep running? Oh, yep. You want to hold it for a second? Yeah. Yeah, sure. They docked in uh, Grinock, Scotland, and then you said there was a warehouse there and they, they put you on a train. Yeah. Where'd you head to? And headed south, mm -hmm. and um, they land, one of the stops they made was Birmingham. Mm -hmm. I think it was Birmingham. Anyway, uh, we all got off the train, walk around, and uh, Stanette and I, we were we were uh, in the railroad yard. And there was an engineer in his in his engine. He was talking to us. He said, "Want to get take a ride?" Yeah, we'll take a ride. We got in the on the engine of the train, and he took us a ride for about a mile or two down in the yard somewhere. And I thought that was keen. And uh, then we boarded the. Uh, let's see. We must have uh, a little phasey there. Eventually, we got in the trucks, and the, tr the trucks took us to. Uh, let's see if I get this right. Took us to uh, Botley, England. Mm -hmm. That's now. That's near. Uh, Southampton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Listen with me. We must have had a, 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 a 
We boarded the train and went down to uh, Southampton. Okay. And then they put us in trucks and took us to Bodley. Okay. Bodley's a little quaint little town. It has one main drag, straight, uh, and little shops, you know. And uh, they had uh, several police officers. And uh, they would escort us individually, twos and threes, to people's homes. We would be billeted in people's homes. Really? Mm -hmm. We were given so much money to pay them for uh, lodging and meals. So um, this officer took me, O'Keefe, And another, another fellow, and uh, took us up to this house, and he rapped on the door, and a lady came to the door, an elderly lady, and he talked to her, and she says, I'm not taking any soldiers in my house, I'm not going to feed any of my soldiers. He said, well, that's the law, it has to, it has to be that. She said, well, I'll take them in, but they can't feed, they can't feed them here. So we went into the house and uh, made arrangements to eat down on the uh, on comes, uh, uh, a pub down there. Mm -hmm. The Bugle. Not even Bugle. Mm -hmm. That was the name of the pub? What's that? Was that the name of the pub? Yeah. Yeah? And that's where we, we ate our breakfast. Lunch and supper there. There, huh? In the pub. In the, and they had a dining room in there. Yeah. And uh, I thought that was keen. Uh, we had a waitress, a little girl, and, and uh, oh, the, fun, the other fellow's name was Davis. Mm -hmm. He was a preacher. He came into the service. He was a preacher. He, came, uh, he was a preacher in the service. But he was a preacher in civilian life. He he wasn't very old. But uh, all three of us ate with uh, noncoms, and uh, we line in the in the morning line up in front of the another pub, and uh, the uh, the company. Company commander's room uh, out of the house across from the pub. And they had a. Uh, <clears throat> they had a um, company clerk always in there. And in the back room, uh, backyard, uh, we'd stand out there in the backyard and um, talk about certain jobs we were going to do, you know, plan. So we, uh, we uh, had different programs, like firing weapons, you know, and that. And then uh, one day they issued everybody uh, white, uh, White uniforms, uh, packers. Mm -hmm. We couldn't understand why they were giving us white packers. But uh, I later learned that we were we were going to go to uh, to Norway or somewhere. There. It was called off, but uh, they were getting us ready to go up there. And then uh, next we got transferred to Bude. We went up there to Bude. That's near Bristol. Okay. And we went. They, uh, <clears throat> we were building in private homes there. I was with the. Uh, I was with a school uh, professor. Uh, taught uh, boy school, private school in Bristol. And. Uh, his boys were only allowed to listen to, to uh, classical music. And uh, 
he had uh, a housekeeper and a, and a gentleman take care of the house. They were like, uh, they were, what do you, you call them, I guess, um, caretakers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we never saw him. Only one time he invited us down to have supper with him. And it was very nice, genial, genial uh, meeting of the man. And the uh, caretaker, uh, one time the, uh, the order came out, we could all go down to the, uh, to one of the shops down there and get a piece of coal. In England they have coal cut in blocks. Okay. And a, and a seal on it. A number or something. And every, every ranger could go down and get a, uh, some coal and take it up. Well, we, we all three of them went, up, went down. There was three of us in that house. That was uh, one man named White. And one man, uh, Yehorzik. Uh, and uh, they were tickled to death to get that coal. Mm -hmm. They had a big open fireplace. And they were, uh, I just felt good doing that to them. They were elderly people. And then we, uh, at Butte, we were learn how to climb cliffs. Really? Yeah, that's when they, and they probably got the word that that's what we were going to do. Had you done any cliff climbing before that at all? None. Mm -mm. And everybody was in the same shoes I was. Nobody could climb anything. It's, it seemed like a, a remote thing to do, you know. How do they train you to do that? They put the ropes up and they get up there. <laughs> you have to physically pull yourself up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they were not the size. They were, they were pretty high cliffs, but they weren't the kind that uh, uh, the hawk had. Mm -hmm. The hawks were much higher. <laughs> But uh, there was there was one one or two guys that uh, knew a little bit about rope climbing. That helped us. Mm -hmm. But it was tough for a while. I know one time I when I got up here I was really exhausted, you know. And I was uh, I had it that time, but uh, it got easier. It got easier and easier all the time. It's surprising. It is a real trick to it. What 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 were some of the tricks to making it easier? Well, it, it's good to have uh, trying to get yourself to, to bounce against the, the uh, wall, you know. And now, uh, um, <clears throat> I. You never, you never expect to you know, have one that's wet or anything like that, you know. And of course, they had three types of ropes. They had the ladder top mm -hmm. rope ladders. Mm -hmm. Then they had the ones with the knots in them. Mm -hmm. And then they had the uh, steel ladders, mm -hmm. section ladders. Put them together. And that, uh, I guess that. That would be the time, in view, I'd say would be the time everybody knew, not us, but the officers knew what we were going to do. Do you remember at what time of year it was in view that you started to, to do the cliff? Well, that would be, April, I guess, something like that. Okay. And uh, I remember, I stood guard, the, uh, they had a main building for us, you know, and not for the officers, you know, plan for going and plan this and then plan that. They had a nice building. In, uh, in Butte is a little village. It has a golf course run right through the, right through the city. Mm -hmm. it's, and there are different golf courses there. And there are lumps of dirt. You know, it's a real, it's a real rough, it's unheard of golf courses there. Here you see a nice greens, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, they were having all kinds of bumps and turns and everything. So anyway, I stand in guard, and 
I was right at the main door, and I never saw so many officers come in and go on out of there. You know, not just American, but English and mm -hmm. all kind of uniforms going in there. And uh, you, you think you could hear, but you couldn't hear nothing. You know, but I know something was going. Something's hot going there. And. Uh, I guess that's about the story about Bude. It was a nice time, nice time, and it had a lot of beach there. Mm -hmm. When you uh, when you had to learn to climb the cliffs at Bude, did you actually have to come in on boats and get out of boats and climb the cliffs, or do you remember? Yeah, yeah I'll get to that. I'll, I'll, I'd say that eventually it was well planned. This yes, thing, this all falls into place. Oh, okay. And uh, well, after after viewed, we went back to Southampton. Okay. That's to get us closer to the water. See, we were way up in the. We we get on to Southampton and, and down to. to uh, We'd be close to the water, so we were going into a um, boarding program. How to board the, the landing craft, how to land and all that sort of thing. It was all continually, every day we went out on a British, uh, not a giant boat, but a good sized boat. And uh, one time, one time we, uh, Went out on this boat, and uh, down near the Isle of Man. That's where the cliffs were. And we uh, landed. We landed. We was uh, landed on these uh, landing craft, and I looked down the beach. Maybe uh, I don't know just how far. A good piece down the beach. And I saw the cliffs, and I saw men climbing up these ladders. These are metal ladders they're climbing up. And this ladder just started going on and fell right down on the beach. I don't know if the men survived or not. They called the operation off that day, and the mm. day off. So it was dangerous. And uh, another time, uh, we landed on the beach in a mass form, and we had to pass all the officers. They were standing observing, you know, taking notes and all that, stuff, watching us land. They wanted to get some points on how to do it, you know. And I, I never saw so much brass in my life. There, they were high-grade officers there. Really, Eisenhower might have been there. I don't know, but they watched the operation. And uh, got them what they wanted. That was the end of that one, that program. Mm -hmm. Another time on the Isle of Man, uh, we wanted to we had to eat, eat uh, English rations, and we opened the, opened a uh, big box of like rations. It's all packed different. I'm, we're not familiar with any of that stuff, and the food. Uh, we don't really enjoy it too, too much, didn't know much about it, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the first time I saw uh, the, uh, women working in the Navy, in the British Navy. And and they're not, uh, it's amazing that the, the work they can do. Tie them bit boats in, you know, make them in, tie that on the man, uh, whatever they do, they. Mm -hmm. Tied them in, you know. It really uh, you had to give them credit. They were really workers. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, we can. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to think of the. Um, 
there was there's one uh, one stop we made. Um, <clears throat> there's one stop we made up there uh, between uh, Butte and Butley, where we um, we were near. We must have been close to Dover. We were kept in a an old schoolhouse. And uh, the second battalion was in that house. We all had bunks, bunk beds, and double tier uh, bunk beds. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was that was one place where they really had the cliffs. And then we, uh, as I recall, you, you've heard of uh, Axis Sally. Mm -hmm. Axis Sally would come in here. Well, we was uh, eating, you know, like uh, in, the, in the evening at dinner, and uh, so she actually did exist. She had a propaganda, you know. She was, uh, she could name things, and you never think, how did she ever learn that, you know, or do this? And. Uh, But that, that 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 particular place was uh, noted for the uh, cliffs. Mm -hmm. But they weren't near. They, I just can't uh, mm -hmm. recall too much about it. Okay. The, main, the main ones was viewed in uh, Botley. Mm -hmm. But back in Botley, the we did a we did, really was out in the water a lot. Mm -hmm. And we got to know the the uh, English sailors real well. I mean, uh, they always uh, were nice to us. Of course, the uh, uh, it wasn't uh, it wasn't anything to, to, to mention about anything negative about uh, you know competition or anything between them or anything like that. So uh, let's see. And they get us get us aboard. Uh, I just want, I don't want to miss anything nice about Botley, except that uh, I want to I want to uh, I don't leave anybody feeling that uh, that lady in Botley was uh, mean in any way. Mm -hmm. But I would tell you this: the day she when we got our rations, we always gave her. The candy bars and all that stuff. And uh, one day, she brought and invited us down to dinner at her house. We know it was on the second floor. And she went in a drawer and got a bottle of scotch out and gave us all a drink of scotch. And uh, I bet that was hard for her to do. But when the day that we leave, the day we got ready to leave, she was in tears. And she went down down the basement and gave us each two bar, two hard boiled eggs. She keeps them in water down in the basement in a bucket. And uh, she wrote a letter to my mother and told her how, how much she enjoyed our stay. And uh, she she sent a letter saying how she missed missed us and how hard it's been for them to live on rations there and the uh, air Fo German air force come across there and dropped uh, what I thought was tinfoil to disrupt the communications from their area and. Uh, so uh, it all turned out good. Yeah. Yeah, for her. And the people in the Bude, or people in Botley, th just uh, were went heads over heels for all the GIs there. Treat them all nice. Mm hmm. 
So the next trip would be to go to the staging area. Mm -hmm. They took us to Plymouth. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, down there in, is a massive communication area. It's in, built into the uh, into a mountain there, uh, sort of a mountain. Mm-hmm. So, uh, as, as we were marching down the street, all the American sailors were either billeted along there somehow. They were always out in the street waving us on. They going on to the, to the Ben McCree. That's the ship we put, we put us on, Ben McCree. Ben McCree? And this is uh, this is just right in front of D-Day. Now, at this point, do you know what your assignment is going to be? Do you still know? Oh, maybe. I, what I did, I think I forgot to tell you the staging area. Okay. Before we went to the went down to the ships, they put us in a staging area. Okay. And we were uh, placed right next to the airborne. Mm-hmm. And it could have been a mistake. There's a lot of competition between them. And uh, they gave us uh, French money and told us all about the job we had to do. Showed us maps. Told us what the job was. And uh, we were in Tent City. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had an accident there. Uh, one fellow reached in his duffel bag, I guess to get uh, stationary or something, and he pulled a pin on a grenade. Oh, no. And everybody ran like mad, and the tent was all shivered up in holes, but nobody got hurt. That's amazing, huh? That is amazing. I don't know, it's, it's, uh, I guess it's all right to mention that. Yeah. This is in the staging area in Tent yeah. City. There, mm -hmm. were you were you kind of when you saw what you were was going to be assigned to do? How did you react to that? Do you remember? Yeah, I don't think I. I don't know. I just. Uh, I, I just. I don't. I didn't feel much of anything. Mm -hmm. We've been training for so long. I mean, just like, let's get it over with, you know, or something like that. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, we never experienced, uh, we never had an, uh, any, anything happen to us that uh, would make us think uh, anything bad, you know. Very good. I'm going to stop. This is the end of part one, and we'll come back in a second.